Welcome to Daz Geek. So there's a really interesting dual purpose here for this video. The first is I'm going to show you how to get into an HP X360 Spectre laptop, one of their latest versions with the Intel Evo inside because they do this thing where they hide the screws, which has become this new trend I'm seeing with a lot of laptop manufacturers. It's really stupid and I wish they would stop, but this could serve that purpose if you're looking to get inside your machine to say, upgrade your NVMe drive or something along those lines. The second purpose and the whole reason why I did this video is because this laptop came with something called Intel Optane. Now Intel Optane in short essentially is a technology that allows you to take a portion of an NVMe drive, usually it's 20, 30 gigabytes, something like that. And they essentially utilize it as a caching area. It's non-volatile so that it can kind of try to predict what applications you're gonna open and things like that. So it's much faster. That's a very, very high level view of what Optane does, but essentially that's the concept behind it, except Intel Optane is really a pain in the butt if you ever need to try to reinstall it onto a drive, because if you install something like Linux, for instance, or you have to remove Optane for some reason and try to put it back on, it's a real pain in the butt to try to set it up again. And if you go to resell your machine because you put a different operating system on it, or you wipe that Optane at some point, then you're gonna run into issues in getting it back. Well, one of the problems that I ran into is I had Linux on this machine. I was looking to resell it, so I was putting Windows back on it. And obviously to put Linux on it, I had to remove Optane, which is weird because Intel is one of the biggest supporters of Linux and open source. Generally, all their technologies work amazing in Linux. Intel Optane is an exception to that. You have to remove it in order to install a distro onto it. But when I went to install Windows back, it could not see the drive at all. And there was no way in Linux to put Optane back onto this specific drive. So I needed to get Windows in there, but I couldn't because Windows couldn't see it. So the only option that I had is to basically take that drive out of the machine, put it into an enclosure like this ROG enclosure here so that I could run it as an external drive then in a operating system, install Windows to it, and then put it back into the laptop. So if you have one of those annoying Intel Optanes that you broke, you need to put it back on, you need to get yourself an enclosure, and then you need to get inside your machine to get that drive out, put it in the enclosure, install Windows onto it, and then you can put it back in your machine. Kind of a pain in the butt, but the only way I could figure to do a workaround with that. And if you need to get Intel Optane back on that drive, of course, you're gonna still need that enclosure and you're gonna to need to use Intel software to reconfigure, format the drive and everything else to do that Optane. So a couple of reasons why we're getting into this system today, but now let's get into taking apart or getting inside the X360 Spectre. I think this is 2021, 2022 edition. So hopefully this helps you one way or the other, get your machine back up and working. So here we have it, the beautiful HP Spectre X360 in all of its glory, well, the bottom of it, anyways and you can see it's very easy to get into the first two screws at least they're at the front of the laptop and they are very apparent but there are no back screws anywhere to be seen so why would you do this why would you hide the screws well, we'll get into that in a second but i will tell you for this you're going to need a t4 screwdriver for the front screws and a t2 screwdriver for the back screws because not only did we hide the back screws but we had to use different screw tips as well. So now I'm taking a plastic spudging tool, which you can order these in all kinds of kits, usually come with phone kits to do screen repair, those type of things. But these plastic tools are extremely helpful to have around. They allow you to get into the little tight spots, even for connectors and things like that, without doing a ton of potential damage if you're using something metal or otherwise. Now, when you see when I pull up this rubber strip, I'm instantly confused because there's nothing there, but blackness and it's more apparent as you're looking at this video on the camera top down but i'm looking in there going i pulled up this rubber strip and i don't see anything underneath it but in fact this particular rubber strip has a piece of double-sided black tape that it connects to and so you have to pull up the rubber strip and that black tape and the other stupid thing about this particular way of doing a laptop is you're never going to get that rubber piece back in exactly right and so you might need to order a replacement entirely. You can see it kind of hangs over. And the reason is when you're pulling up on that rubber piece, it's actually stretching that rubber. It's just all around a stupid, stupid way of, I'm guessing, try to discourage people from getting into their machines. I don't know. 
but you can see I pulled it from the other side and that revealed all the screws. So on the one side, it had that black tape that was covering, but when I pulled from the other side, you can see we have four screws here that we can take out. And this is a close up look of the stupid design that they made for that little rubber stopper between your laptop and the table. I guess you could do without them as well, but it does keep the laptop slightly off of the surface, which allows the cooling and things to work better. So we're gonna take those four screws out. And again, for the back, you're gonna need the T2. So you're gonna need a screwdriver set for technical computers and those things. It has all those different tips that come with it. And so you can order those again and go to your local electronics store. You can order those online because inside you're gonna need even another one. So right now I'm taking the little pick spudger tool and I'm pulling right where the hinge is at because there's a gap where the hinge is. And then I'm running that tool gently across the rest of the frame so that I can basically undo the clasps that are inside that are holding that little tiny thin, super, super thin piece of metal uh, back covering that you don't want to bend. So you have to be careful not to bend it. So I'm just kind of going around and I'm just doing little lifts here and there across the entire frame, but you want to start with the hinges because that's where you can get that little plastic tool inside and that will allow you to pop the clasps and be able to get into this machine once you've done that. And you don't want to pull up too hard on the back or the front because you might bend this very, very thin piece of metal. You can see how thin it is. It is paper, paper thin there. So you don't want to end up bending that. And now we are inside and you can see it's pretty dust free, which is nice. It's because it's mostly new, not because I'm just that good at cleaning. But we need to take the battery out because you want to disconnect the battery anytime that you're actually working on a laptop. Now, technically you don't have to disconnect the battery here. You can pull that little white connector there that you see by my hand. It's got the little different color wires running to it, but it's really hard to disconnect it without removing the battery because of the angle that it's connected at. And so it's easier to actually just remove the battery. And then you can remove that white connector piece right there that my finger is pulling on without actually doing any damage to the machine. So it's just, again, there's four screws at the top, two screws in the back holding on the battery. And I believe these were just plain Phillips. So again, you've got more different types of screwdriver tips that you're gonna need because manufacturers just wanna be jerks with this stuff. I, I don't know why they do it. In any case, once you actually remove the battery, it's very easy to get that piece out. But you can see the usefulness of having that plastic spudging tool because it just allows you to get into those tight corners without actually damaging something. And boom, our battery's out. We don't have to worry about the power coming in while we're pulling out a hard drive or anything else keeping us safe. And you got that lithium ion polymer battery here, which is kind of cool. You know, back in the day, you'd have those 18650 batteries and the batteries would be really thick and now they can make them in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, which we talk about on Hardware Addicts. And under this little piece of metal here, is where our NVMe drive is, that Optane drive that's caused me so much pain and so much sadness until you really need to do something with the whole Optane technology. I don't know what this little metal cover is really supposed to accomplish. It's kind of a weird heat sink. I don't think it really does much. It's super thin, but maybe protect some heat shield there. And you could just remove that little screw there and your NVMe drive is going to be able to slide out and you can put it in your enclosure, your external enclosure, and then you can fix that drive. You can install windows on it from another machine, or you can fix Optane and put Optane back on that drive as well. So this is kind of a close up so you can see the various things inside this machine. One of the annoying things about this machine is that everything's covered by some type of plastic that's kind of glued down or stuck there. So if you really want to dig in and find your memory and other things, you're kind of tearing stuff up like that rubber piece on the back that's hard to get back in place perfectly, which again is just poor design ultimately from the beginning. But to put everything back together, you're just gonna watch this video in reverse basically, uh, you could do. But the one thing I wanted to show you with the battery specifically is that it's easier to get in if you hold the battery slightly at an angle to get that connector in because it's a really tight space and it's a very short cable. But if you hold it at an angle there, you can see with just my thumbnail, I'm able to pop that connector in with no issue. And that's really the only other thing. Everything else should just pop back into place just as easily as we took it out there. 
and I'm using the little plastic spudger tool. See how convenient that is? Just to make sure that's nice and tight. Now, open your laptop up to make sure the front of this, you're popping all of those clamps back into place. And so one of the tricks is don't try to pop it with the whole laptop closed as one unit, but open up that screen as you can see I'm doing here, and then push your panels and make sure you go all the way around several times. If you're having a hard time screwing in those screws, if they're, you're trying to crank on them and they're not going in, then you do not have it clamped down correctly or something else is obstructing it. So you can see it really wasn't that difficult to get into the machine. Once you found out where those screws were, it kind of threw me for a loop when I first started taking this machine apart. I didn't look at any other videos. I don't think there's videos specific to this one that I could find. Uh, so hopefully this helps you be able to get into your machine. Another thing that would help you is the sponsor of our network, Bitwarden. Go to bitwarden.com slash tux right now. I'm serious when I say this, greatest password manager out there on the planet. We used it well before ever became a sponsor because it's just literally the greatest password manager on the planet. They have third party audits that come in to make sure it's secure and safe. And having a password manager these days is not just optional, it's mandatory because you need to have different usernames and different passwords for every site you use because the amount of information and data being collected and stolen from people on a daily basis is at just epic levels. And so you need something that you can rely on that's safe, that's on all your devices, so you can still get to your passwords conveniently, but keeps those encrypted before they ever leave your device. And that's what Bitwarden does. So go to bitwarden.com slash tux, let them know that I sent you there. They're an amazing sponsor. They help us do all kinds of cool things on this network. And I will be at scale this year in California coming up this month, not even this year, this month, I will be at scale. So if you're going to be at scale, I hope to see you there and check out our hardware addicts podcast that I'm a part of with Michael and Wendy, a podcast that's bi-weekly and we go through all of the awesome hardware and tech out there. I hope you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up, hit that subscribe. And until next time, get out there and fill your brains.